So now I'll talk a little bit more about how CDFs and PDFs work for continuous random variables in the joint case. So we have two random variables. So um, let's remember what was the CDF definition, right? The CDF definition is just carried over from the one dimensional world. It's a probability that I'm less than some value here and less than some value there, okay? So that's like saying I got some point in x, y space, what is the probability of this stripy region here, okay? So um, there are uh, some properties that we have to have, right? So I know that as I go out to infinity, I have gotten all the probability, right? And I know that when I go to negative infinity, for example, if I hold x constant and go all the way to the bottom of y, then I should have zero probability, right? And the same way, if I fix y constant and go all the way to the bottom of x, I should get um, zero probability. So the intuition is that I have a function that basically smoothly slopes from zero all the way down at this end up to one all the way up at infinity, right? And since things are continuous, we showed that in the discrete world, this was kind of like a stair-steppy function, but in the continuous world, this is going to be a nice smooth function. And so let me just give you an example. So for example, as we're going to talk about in more detail in a couple of lessons, this is the CDF for the 2D uniform random variable. What it looks like is the following. And so let me define it first. And unfortunately, you know, the main thing that you have to think about is between zero and one, it's equal to the product of x and y. Okay, that's the kind of operative part. Now, unfortunately, I have to have a whole bunch of other little case statements that say it's zero if x is less than zero or y is less than zero. It's one if x is greater than one and y is greater than one. And then it's x if um, x is in the range zero to one and y is greater than one and it's y if y is in the range here and x is greater than one. Okay, so it's a little bit tedious to write down all these cases. Let's just look at what does the PDF look, or the CDF look like as a picture, right? It looks like this. So here, the key idea is that there is kind of a uh, slope over here that um, goes from zero all the way up to one. And as I rotate around, I see it kind of looks like a smooth plateau up to one. If I look at it from the top, I can see that beyond one in both directions, I have one probability. Below zero on either side, I have zero probability. And in between, it just kind of like smoothly slopes up. And the five conditions in that previous uh, written slide are just the five pieces that make up this function. The interesting part is really what's happening between zero and one in both directions, where I'm smoothly accruing probability going from zero, zero, all the way up to the corner at one, one, okay? So what does the PDF look like? Okay, so this is where things get a little bit more exciting. So let's remember what we had for the one-dimensional random variable, right? So if in 1D, remember that there was a relationship between the CDF and the PDF, right? The CDF was the integral up to x of the PDF. And the PDF was the derivative of the CDF, okay? So that's all still true, but now we have to carry it over into 2D, right? So in 2D, unfortunately, if you didn't like doing one-dimensional integrals, you're not gonna like doing the two-dimensional integrals either, right? Because the relationship is the following. I have a relationship between um, basically the two-dimensional PDF and CDF. Here I'm integrating like this, right? So basically I'm integrating up to the point x comma y, and then conversely, to get the PDF from the CDF, I take the derivative in x and the derivative in y of the CDF, okay? So I've got a double derivative, okay? So let's be um, particular about what did I learn about uh, this uniform random variable. 
well, what would I get if I wanted to take the PDF? I'd have to take the derivative of that in both X and Y, okay? So what is the uniform random variable 2D PDF? Well, it's the dx dy of this. Well, luckily there aren't a lot of case statements here because, you know, that derivative is zero almost everywhere. It's, it's zero here, it's zero here, it's zero for this because if I take the derivative with respect to x, I get one. I take the derivative of that with respect to y, I get zero, right? So the only thing that's interesting is happening right here. What I get is um, I get one if I'm in the sweet range here and I get zero otherwise. So this one I can draw more or less in 2D. It looks like basically this cube here. So in this world, what I have is a function that is basically one, it's a box between the, you know, from the overhead view, it looks like this. Okay. And just like for one dimensional integrals, we're going to do 2D integrals over this PDF to get the PDF, the, to get the probabilities of certain events, right? So if I want to compute the probability of some, um, you know, sort of event in the XY plane, the probability that um, the point I get is inside this is just going to be the double integral over this region of the two-dimensional PDF. Now, hopefully our, um, you know, um, regions are not going to be too ugly and it'll be, you know, not so bad to take these integrals, okay? Um, so for example, uh, let's suppose that I want to, oh, actually, before I, before I do the example, let me just uh, say that we also had this concept from before of the marginals. We talked about that in the context of discrete random variables. What are the marginals for continuous random variables? So the 2D marginal PDFs in a continuous world, right? So remember the concept here was basically like saying, you know, suppose I want to know what is the distribution of X by itself. Well, you know, that's like saying, I don't care about Y. If I had the joint PDF, that's just like saying integrate out y. I don't care about y at all. Um, and so similarly, if I wanted to know what was the marginal in x, I would take the joint and I would integrate out x, right? So here, this is how I get y by itself by not caring about x. This is how I get x by itself by not caring about y. Okay, so to draw a little picture, this is like saying if I have the joint uh, PDF to get the marginal in X, I integrate out Y. So I would integrate to get basically uh, just the marginal in X. And then to get the other way, I could integrate out x to get the marginal in y. Okay, And so I'm going to do an example in detail in the next lesson just to show you how to kind of grind through these double integrals. But those are the key like theoretical concepts that you need to understand what's going on with 2D, PDFs, CDFs, and marginals.